And now I do have to tell you though, I do have some bad news. I just found out one of my friends is a communist. Oh, no. You know, I should have known. The red flags were everywhere. <laughs> but I mean, actually, I do have some good news though. The Colorado legislature is out for 20, 2018. <laughs> and for this year, so your wallets, your bank accounts, our freedoms and liberties are safe. Well, until at least next January. So it's, it's a long battle, you know, it continues and goes on. So really, I want to talk to you a little bit about tonight about, I have some handouts going around the room. I don't have enough for everybody, so please share. But um, just to give you an idea, there were over eight, almost 800, 800 pieces of legislation that went through the Colorado State Capitol this year. Bills, memorials, resolutions, every little which way in which your freedoms can be taken from you, how you can be regulated, everything from who can watch dogs, um, if, you're, if it's legal to dog sit or not, to, to cryptocurrency and a lot of other fun stuff. So I'll talk a lot about some of just a handful. I won't talk about all 800, but just a handful of some of what's going on at the Capitol. So to start talking about the Colorado legislature, right? So who, who here knows who represents them at the state Capitol? Who's your state representative? Anybody? Raise your hand if you know who your state representative is, if you know who your state senator is, if you know who the people who actually are passing laws that affect us directly are. It's very few, very few people, and this is everywhere. I mean, you talk to everybody, you know, the national, national political scene really soaks up all of the, of the attention, right? Everybody's talking about Trump, they're talking about Congress, the Senate, talking about foreign policy, but there's really little bit of media coverage about the things that actually affect us very, very tremendously. So we'll talk a little bit about that tonight. So, now you may be surprised, there are actually very libertarian-leaning politicians at the state capitol, can you believe that? There actually are, we have a few. And you probably aren't surprised, we also have very uh, authoritarian leaning and basically yes. outright communists at the state capitol as well. That probably doesn't surprise anybody here, that's, that's the norm, it really is. Yes, you saw the red flags. Yeah, a lot of red flags. A lot of red flags. So, um, uh, on the handout, I've, at the very top, there's a little bit of, of description about how our state government is set up. We have 100 legislators, so it's 100 elected officials in the State House and State Senate who represent over 5 million Coloradans. Can you believe that? 100 people are supposed to represent the needs, wants, desires of 5 million people. I mean, does that, doesn't that seem kind of crazy? A little absurd? Is that even possible that that can happen? Does anybody think it's even possible that a politician, any politician, can represent any of us? No. Nope. Right? No. Nope. Well, I digress. I don't want to get too off there, but... Um, so, Colorado is currently one of only four. There are four states across the United States that have a split legislature. We have a Republican-dominated Senate and a Democrat-dominated House. There's only you know, four, four states total that have that. Most of them are controlled by one party or the other. So that's a very interesting situation here. It actually kind of is a good thing, right? It kind of holds each it's checks and balances, right? So the most extreme right-wing Republican policies are and put in check by the Democrats, and then the most hardcore left-wing outright communist policies are put in on hold by the Republicans, the one seat majority that Republicans have in the state Senate. So kind of interesting, but it also means that, you know, a lot of the bad stuff stopped. It also means the really, really bad stuff is usually what gets through, right? The stuff that both sides agree on, which is usually the most on onious and just terrible, onerous, whatever, you know, bad stuff, right? So, um, you know, a, a lot of people have this idea of what tyranny is, and tyranny is not always what people think it is, you know, it's not always it is, it definitely is, men with guns kicking down your door, forcing you to do something, kidnapping you, taking your property away. But it's also just the tiny little regulations that are just put upon businesses that make it just harder and harder, almost impossible to keep up with, whether it's licensing requirements, fees, restrictions, regulations. It's really death by a thousand cuts, is how the free market's been destroyed, about how our individual liberty has been taken. And so, um, and some of the bills that I have listed here, people are saying, oh, so what, you know, so what, they're restricting these tiny little things, so what, they're making horse jockeys take drug tests now, right, that doesn't affect me, but you know, it does, right, we know if we understand economics that just one little thing is going to affect everything else, and it's going to create a whole quagmire of confusion that really restricts the free market, okay? So, you know, I've noticed uh, something recently that authoritarians, I've really been focusing on creating new regulations and restrictions on businesses and these evil corporations that are out to get everybody. And that's really a lot of the legislation we've been seeing at the Capitol. You know, these, a lot of these politicians, they believe they know what's best. They know what's best, they know how employers should interact with their employees. They know how landlords should interact with their tenants. And most recently, they know how healthcare providers should interact with everybody, right? And they know best, and if they pass this one law, everybody's gonna be better off because of it. 
All right, so now does anybody think that government has embedded itself in nearly every aspect of our lives? Doesn't it seem so? Well, if you, if you do think that, you're 100% right. It definitely has. I mean, every year, I mean, the restrictions are ridiculous. Uh, every conceivable human interaction is regulated, um, is talked about, is discussed, is debated at the state capitol here in Colorado. So I'm going to mention a few of the bills, some of the ones that we think at Advancing Colorado are some of the more important ones. Uh, afterwards, I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the legislature, state government, political philosophy, whatever you want to talk about. Happy to talk about that. So, but please hold your questions to the end. So you see the Colorado legislative recap at the top of your sheet. Some of the big issues this year, um, some of the biggest thing that happened at the Capitol was the first time in over 100 years the state legislature actually expelled one of their members. I don't know if anybody can hear about this. So there's a representative Steve Lepsock who's accused of sexual harassment and actually took a vote, and two-thirds of that house, so two-thirds of the Colorado State House, voted to kick him out, right? A lot of people have a problem with that, right? I mean, what about representative government? Doesn't this guy, what if, what if the people of his district want somebody who, or don't care that he's a sexual harasser, accused, excuse me, he hasn't been convicted in court of law, but who are the legislators to say who should they be, who should represent this community? Definitely a big issue, about 100 years. I mean, it's big news, folks. Big news that the legislator can kind of come together and decide who to kick people out that they don't like. So, interesting. I'll get to questions at the end if that's all right. All right, so that was one of the biggest things. Um, transportation, always a huge deal. Somebody just needs to fix our damn roads, right? You know, just like in traffic all the time. Uh, para, if everybody knows what para is, the public retirement. Oh, that's it's like, huge. Talk about that. Uh, <laughs> para's kind of, uh, I like, uh, para's interesting, but it's also kind of boring. It's like, the, the bill they passed this year, though, Senate Bill, uh, I think it was 200, um, would actually, within uh, the way Para was set up right now, within about 200 years, it would finally be solvent. The bill they passed now is about 32 years. But of course, we'll see, you know, the politicians will get their hands in the, co hands in the cookie jar, and the politicians will say, well, you know, we need that money for something else. So we'll see what happens there. There's, Para's going to be something we're talking about for a long time. No gun control. Gun control is a huge issue. Huge issue at the end of the, of the legislative session, so we'll talk about that. Uh, legislative redistricting. We actually got a, a legislative redistricting bill passed. So the census is coming up in 2020. And that determines how the boundary lines are being drawn for who represents who. Because um, as you can see on this sheet, I mean, what do we got? You know, each senator represents 143,000 people. Each representative represents 77,000 people. Those numbers are from 2010, right? When they drew the live lines from the last census. So 2020 census, we have a hu hit a huge population growth here in Colorado. So that's going to be a big issue coming up. So redistricting, figuring out how people are going to be picked to represent which communities, that's going to be a very interesting issue. We don't know exactly how that's going to look like, what the impact of it is going to be. Something that's pretty cool, though, a uh, bill passed last year, and there was a lot of debate on it this year. Retail sales of full-strength alcohol are coming to con some convenience stores and grocery stores. How cool is that? Yeah. Isn't that great about time, right? You go down to some other states, and they, they have had that for a long time. All right, so let's move on. Now. What freedoms did we gain? So the first one on the list there, we got civil asset forfeiture reform. That's a huge issue. Does everybody know about civil asset forfeiture? So last year there was a bill passed that we really lobbied hard on, uh, House Bill 1313, which allowed big, big civil asset forfeiture reform. So when police steal somebody's property, at least now they have to put it in a database online so people can track it. It's not perfect, we haven't abolished it, but it's a step in the right direction, right? Some transparency to it. The bill they passed this year, uh, 1020, was kind of just some cleanup language and clarifying it and also just some details on it. But it's good to see that civil asset forfeiture reform is actually making progress here in Colorado. That's some good, good news. All right. One of the other big ones, House Bill 1258, marijuana accessory consumption establishments, uh, commonly referred to as a tasting room. So when you go to buy marijuana, you can actually go into a tasting room. You know, they have to get special permit permission and all of that. But nonetheless, that's a big deal. because Social use has been a big issue um, since it's been made legal. So that's at the governor's desk right now. Hickman Looper has not signed it yet, but it passed through both houses. We'll see what happens there, but definitely a very interesting bill. Another big one was uh, 1263, which was medical marijuana use for uh, autism, which was a huge issue. There have been, I, I mean, if you were down there at the Capitol listening to these parents testify, I mean, it would break your heart. It's hard not to well up with tears when these people are saying, my gosh, my son and my daughter are suffering. They're going through this pain, they have autism, they're hitting themselves. For the first time, they could talk. They could say, I love you, mom. I mean, you listen to that, it's, you have to be pretty cold-hearted not to, not to say, yeah, you know, let's go ahead and let that happen, you know? So, medical marijuana for autism, a big deal. Also not signed by the governor yet. We'll see what Hickenlooper does about that. Uh, SB 28, 
Kind of a, an arcane one there, but uh, motor vehicle license plate mounting requirements. Has anybody got a ticket for not having a license plate on the front of your car? Is that illegal? Yeah. It is illegal in Colorado. The restriction was it had to be 12 inches exactly from the ground to have your front license plate on your car. The bill passed this year, thankfully, and it was signed by the governor, was that it actually, you can have your front license plate any, displayed anywhere on the front of your car. So your windshield, Mine's like tied to the front of my Jeep, you know. You can basically put it however you want. But so that's, you know, one small one for freedom, right? Yeah. One small one for freedom. That's what we get, you know. We can at least get, celebrate some small victories. Sleep easier, yeah. Drive home, take your license plate off and protest, you know. Um, SV15 was a big one, especially for people down in Colorado Springs. There's a huge squatting issue. If you're a believer in personal property, private property, um, you know, you come home, you're deployed overseas, or you go out of town, you travel, and you come home, you find people are squatting in your house. You know, it, it's actually difficult to get them out. You have to go through civil procedure to get them out. get them out legal. Illegal. It is difficult to get them out legal. Good point, man. Um, but this bill actually um, was pretty good. Um, if you believe in private property rights, it actually allows you to, you know, not that I'm an advocate for police violence, but you can actually go out and say, yeah, this guy's squatting in my house, kick him out. Good, good idea, right? I mean, if it's your house, <laughs> right, you should be able to do that. So that was SB 15. Uh, 1296, House Bill 1296, unattended remote vehicles, remote starter systems. This last year was a, the big puffing bill. You know, you can go outside. I know Arvada, where I'm from, that's a big issue. People are warming up their cars in the winter. And then if you went, the cops are actually circling neighborhoods, watching people in the morning before work. Who would, who's starting up their car and then go inside? And then they would ticket you. You know, it's revenue collection, right? They want to make some money off of it. Well, luckily we got the anti, the puffing bill passed last year, but it was only remote starter systems that you could do it. This year, we made one more step closer to freedom. We actually allowed uh, you to be able to do it, but you have to have your car secured. So if you locked your car, you're fine now. But if you leave your car unlocked, it's against the law. <laughs> if you leave your car locked or remote starting system, you're fine now, thankfully, yeah, right? Okay, a big one too, uh, a lot of people are, were really excited about this, was 1295, hemp products deemed not adulterated or misbranded. There was a big restriction on using industrial hemp um, for forever, basically, in Colorado, since it all became illegal. Um, but now, actually, hemp can be used. Industrial hemp can be used in a variety of products, and it won't be illegal anymore. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, we're, we're seeing the witness of a whole new industry, not just the legal cannabis, but also the hemp. So we are making some progress on some levels. You know, there are some things that are happening. So that's kind of some of the freedoms we got, right? I mean, exciting, right? We didn't really gain a whole lot, you know, but hey, we got a few things, right? Last year, I think we had a little bit more progress. I don't know if you know, but switchblades are now legal in Colorado. Yeah, right on, right on, right? That was last year. We got civil asset forfeiture reform passed. We got free speech on campus passed. Some good bills last year. A little bit this year, not a ton. Um, it was really, the legislature was really a toxic, toxic environment this year with the sexual harassment stuff going on. And I mean, it was just insane. It was just crazy. Um, I don't know if you saw it when they were expelling Steve Lepsock. It's like eight hours, eight hours of debate. The Democrats are up there, and Republicans too, don't get me wrong, but they're out there and they're saying, yeah, this guy, he's such a bad guy, he's such a bad guy. We actually had two representatives go up there and say, I've been wearing a bulletproof vest. I've been putting a bulletproof vest on in my garage. I don't want my kids to see, I don't want them to know. But I'm not worried this guy's gonna shoot me. And two of them said that, two legislators, and the other legislators were like, well, if you thought this guy was going to go crazy, why don't you tell somebody? Like, you should report it to the state police patrol, which is in charge of security there. You should tell the other legislators. I mean, you really believe that, or is it just some sort of marketing ploy? I don't know. But it was crazy. So let's see, what freedoms do we lose? This is a long list. It's a very, very long list, as you'd expect. Um, some of the big ones. Senate Bill 88 was probably the worst one. Really, really horrible. So it actually circumvented Tabor, fully unconstitutional. Horrible bill. Um, I don't know how they're getting away with it. Could be some possible legal, legal action. But it basically added a new tax on marijuana for special districts like RTD, the Science and Cultural Fund, you know, the museums and the, and the zoo and all that kind of stuff. There was a, a tax that didn't exist before because of the bill last year. And then they put a new bill this year that created the new tax. 100% against the Constitution, Tabor. Doesn't matter, state legislator passed it, Hick and Looper signed it. You know, horrible, really horrible. Uh, Senate Bill 172, like I mentioned, horse racing, licensee, alcohol, and drug testing. Ridiculous, right? And this just shows you know, how creative these politicians get, you know? These, they get very, very creative. How can, where can we take people's freedoms away? So this one was 
drug testing jockeys. I mean, unbelievable, right? Like, what is the problem? Do we have drunk jockeys just going through the streets, knocking people over? Right? Oh. But it also allowed regulation of horse stables now, too. So the government can come in and say, are these horses being treated fairly? Are they being fed enough hay and things like that? So it's uh, Senate Bill 146. Freestanding emergency departments required consumer notices. So, uh, you know, the market's great. Business is wonderful. Free enterprise is amazing. We have all these new, healthcare's gotten so expensive, but we have all these urgent care clinics. We have new businesses being created to, to circumvent these government restrictions, you know? But you know what? The government doesn't like that. Our state government says, no, 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 no. What are you talking about? We got freestanding emergency rooms. We got all these urgent care centers. We gotta regulate that. We gotta regulate that. We gotta control what they're doing. So this was like consumer notices. They said, oh yeah, we've got to be transparent. We've got to force these businesses to tell people this long list of patient bill of rights and post all these notices everywhere and all this. I mean, it's just ridiculous restrictions. Basically makes the cost of doing business harder, makes it a lot more expensive for these businesses to operate, and interferes with the relationship between businesses and consumers. Bad stuff. So then I go 104. This was a big bipartisan, much touted, much marketed, wonderful thing. It was... Uh, Federal funds for rural broadband development. So there's rural broadband, right? I mean, uh, uh, the heart's there, right? Like these farmers and people out in these communities in the mountains, they don't have internet, they don't have broadband. Let's do something about it. Let's do something about it. So let's use tax dollars. Let's use money that we're all making, that we're all paying, and we're gonna go ahead and build them. It's not, don't worry, don't worry that it's not economically viable. You know, no, no private company wants to do it because they're not gonna make a profit on it. That's all right, that's what we got taxes for. That's what we can, steal people's money and use it to put on these programs, right? Everybody agree that taxation is theft? Yeah! All right, yeah. All right good. All right, Senate Bill 76, kind of a weird one, banning vote trading. This, these, and these are all bills that passed this year in this section, folks. Like, these are bills that are law, as long as the governor doesn't veto them. Some of them hadn't made it past the governor's desk yet, but nonetheless, ban vote trading. So say, you know, I wanna vote, I wanna vote for Tony, but uh, you know, I'm only gonna vote for him if I get somebody else to vote for a different candidate in a different area and we'll trade. Like, I don't care, I don't care if, if this commissioner wins or loses. But hey, you vote for the guy I want, I'll vote for the guy you want, we both win. It's illegal now. It's illegal. I mean, how they, for one, I don't know how they're gonna know that you're doing that, but it's just, you don't own your own vote apparently. You can't decide what to do with it. Very bizarre. Senate Bill 22, I mean, don't get me wrong, the opioid, Crisis is horrible, right? And people are dying like left and right like crazy. But the government has to do something about it. We gotta do something about it. We can't let this continue on. So Senate Bill 22 limits initial prescriptions for opioids only seven days. Now there are exclusions if you have a terminal disease or cancer or something really bad, you can get longer. But nonetheless, I mean, these are these politicians, these bureaucrats, they're not doctors. They have no idea if seven days is a good limit or not. But we gotta do something. We gotta do something to fight the opioid epidemic. Actually, recent had a really good article about Walmart is doing this voluntarily, but it could backfire on them and actually cause hurt, cause a lot of pain to people and cause a lot of problems. So ridiculous. Let's see, House Bill 1307. So limit access to products with uh, dextromethaphan. So you, basically, if you're under 18 now, you cannot buy cough syrup. That is now law in Colorado. You cannot buy cough syrup if you're under 18 because all these kids were getting high off cough syrup and making meth and you know all this crazy stuff. So we've got to do something about the drug problem, right? We got the government's idea is we got to protect people from themselves. We got to protect them from each other. Let's just do what we say. All right, let's see. Uh, 1256. You may hear about the civil. Just you know, Colorado is a civil rights commission. So we have a, a appointed board, basically, that says, oh, you're discriminating against somebody. Oh, you don't want to bake their cake. You don't want to make them a bouquet of flowers. Well, if it's because of this, this, and this, we can come in, we can shut down your business, we can confiscate your wealth. It doesn't matter what you believe. That is what the government believes. So the, there's a much touted thing. There's this uh, out in Lakewood, Jack Phillips, Masterpiece Cake Shop. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's going to be heard in the Supreme Court. Um, it's being heard in the Supreme Court right now. I think June is when we're expecting an outcome. But the guy would refuse to make a wedding cake for a gay couple. It's his business. He spent his whole life building it. He just doesn't want to. It's against his religious beliefs. He just doesn't want to. Well, it's against the law in Colorado. You can't do that. You have to bake the cake for him. You have to. And he says, well, I don't want to. So they're going to shut him down. They're going to shut him down. So the Civil Rights Commission 
It's a Soviet-style commission that basically regulates that behavior. You know, I think. Yeah, right, yeah, you gotta think the right way. You can't have thought crime, you know? You have the right, if you deny them the business for the wrong reason, you're out of, out of, uh, out of options there. So um, that got passed, unfortunately. We were really hoping the Republican-controlled Senate, because of the Kate Baker stuff, would uh, allow the Civil Rights Commission to fade into the sunset. Unfortunately, they did review it right at the end of the legislative session about a week and a half ago. This one's kind of silly, uh, 1191. Local government alters speed limits. So right now, if you're at the city of Denver and you want to put a change the speed limit, you have to consider a huge laundry list of things to say, well, what's the environmental impact if we change the speed limit? What's the, what about bicycles? What about the safety of people? What about, I mean, it's basically new mandates coming from the state government to all the small jurisdictions across the state saying, well, listen, if you want to change your speed limits, you've got to conform to these rules. More regulation, more bureaucracy, more mandates. Horrible. Let's see, uh, 1103 is another one I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, I don't like this because I'm a Jeep driver. Anybody else off-road? Yeah. Stuff like that, right on, okay. So local government off-highway vehicle register, uh, vehicle regulation. So before, it's really if you're only on the highway or city streets, things like that, that's the government's justification of how they can regulate your seat belts, your helmets, how many people can be in the car. Well, with this bill that just passed, it doesn't matter. You're off-road, you go up in the mountains, and you're not wearing your seat belts, you're not wearing the proper safety equipment. No, you have too many people in the car. Well, guess what? You have to follow those regulations now. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. So, you know, you can see we, we gained some freedoms, some small measures of liberty. We lost some others. But what's really interesting, what's really telling, is the bills that didn't make it through. Because these are the most extreme bills. And whether we had a Democrat majority fully in our government, or Republican majority, some of these bills would have become law or not. So just to give you an idea of some of the good bills, some of the bills that I believe from a libertarian perspective would have been amazing to pass. Um, Senate Bill 277, exempt cryptocurrency from money transmitters act. That was awesome. Basically it would have said, it would basically made, said that blockchain cryptocurrency, uh, blockchain based currencies like Bitcoin, things like that, would not be subject to the money transmitters act, not be treated as a security, uh, it would be a huge measure of freedom for a blockchain. But the Attorney General of Colorado, Cynthia Kaufman, shut that down. She said, no, there's going to be fraud. There's going to be you know, people ripping people off, getting into investing Bitcoin and things like that. So we need to keep, keep it in that money transmitters scheme. So that would have been a great one. A big one that our friends at uh, Americans for Prosperity, AP, was pushing. Senate Bill 236 and 193, the Occupational Licensing Reform. I mean, it's ridiculous. So if you want to braid somebody's hair, you want to cut somebody's hair, you want to do their nails, you got to get licenses, right? you got to get government approval, you know? You might not be doing it right. It might be causing the public health hazard. So this bill would have eliminated, great bill, would have eliminated a lot of the restrictions, or even only if it's a public safety type of necessity situation. You can't just be requiring people to get permits and, and uh, you know, licenses to operate businesses that are not public safety related, I suppose. So. Uh, pretty interesting. Another one I was really excited about was uh, Senate Bill 97, concealed handgun with no permit, otherwise called constitutional carry. Yeah. It would have said that if you're a law-abiding gun owner, you'd be legally able to carry your gun concealed without any extra permits or extra fees, things like that. Right now, you know, if you have to, if you want to carry a handgun concealed, it's not enough that you went through the background check to buy the gun. You got to go through a separate background check to get the permit to carry the gun. And it's expensive. Some of these jurisdictions are ridiculous in terms of hundreds of dollars or so, plus class time and all these other things. So that bill did not make it. Ooh, red light cameras. Anybody ever get caught in a red light camera? Horrible, right? So red light camera repeal 1072. It had some good chances. We've actually gotten that passed out of the legislature years past two years. Hickenlooper vetoed it both times. I don't know if it's the red light camera companies or what. But uh, this bill was, we were pretty excited about, but unfortunately didn't make it this time. Usually a bipartisan uh, support. Uh, another one, a deadly force against intruder at a business. Everybody know about Colorado's Make My Day Law. Somebody breaks into your home at night, you, you're legally able to shoot them and kill them to defend yourself and your family. Well, this would have extended those same protections to a business. Makes sense, right? A lot of us, you know, if you're a workaholic, you're at your business more than your home. So it makes perfect sense. Stopped, killed, bill was stopped. Now what's more interesting and kind of kind of scary some of these bills, these are some of the bad bills that were introduced but fortunately were killed. The Family Medical Leave Program. This is another one that tugs at the heartstrings, right? 
You know, people have emergencies. Your family has an emergency. You could get get time off work, but you should get paid, right? I mean, even though you're not working, it's not your fault. It's an emergency. So this family medical leave program will basically put a tax on every single employee of Colorado. If you work in Colorado, you would have paid an extra fee, so more money coming out of your paycheck than government bureaucrats would decide how that's dispersed. We'll give a qualifying uh, family emergency that will give you money. So really, really bad. It would have hurt businesses a lot. This one I was kind of, I, I put it in the bad column, but I was kind of, I kind of wanted it to pass because it'd be kind of fun. 1368, local control of minimum wage. So it allows small municipalities and counties to set their own minimum wage laws. It'd be kind of fun to see when all of a sudden Boulder puts $25 minimum wage <laughs> or Denver, you know, what, what would happen, happen right? Like, Can you imagine? And then you have uh, other counties or other cities outside that lower their minimum, you know, set their own minimum wage at a lower amount or things like that. It would have been a pretty interesting social experiment, I think, to see, imagine, but that didn't make it. This was the biggest one. This dominated on Advancing Colorado on our Facebook page. We got more, and it was unbelievable. We got more out, re, outrage and reach. I mean, at, at one point, we were posting about this gun confiscation red flag bill, 1436. I had over 300,000 people seeing our wow. Facebook posts. We had over 22,000 people interacting with our comments. It's engaging, liking, commenting, and sharing. That was a thousand more than the Denver Post was getting that week. I mean, we were, it was crazy because it's a horrible bill. Red flag gun confiscation means, you know, if your ex dating partner, if your roommate, a family member, or a member of law enforcement <laughs> thinks that you're a threat, they can go to a judge. It's an ex parte trial, which means you're not there, you can't defend yourself. They hold a, a, a closed door trial without you there. It's like, yeah, 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 let's take this guy's guns away. He's a danger. He's a threat. He's been posting stuff on Facebook. He's been going to Liberty on the Rocks, you know? He's got some sort of anarchist. Let's take his guns away. If the judge signs off on it, yep. cops show up at your door. Boom, 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 boom. Six in the morning. We're here to take your guns. Not a good thing, right? Not a good thing at all. Um, crazy. Fortunately, we were able to defeat that bill. That bill yeah. stopped. It was really, really a scary one. I know, I think it's like six or seven other states have passed this bill. And it was crazy if you watch the testimony from the bill supporters, which was bipartisan, by the way, don't get me wrong, we had Republicans and Democrats vote for this. But they go up there and they say, yeah, 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 we have this, but don't worry, you know, eight other states have it too, but ours isn't as bad as theirs. There's a little bit more due process than ours, it's not as restrictive, it's only seven days they take their guns away initially, and then you can appeal after that. It's not as bad as like those other states where they take it for six months at a time. That was their argument. It's not as bad as the other ones, it was unbelievable. It was crazy though, I mean, I was actually listening to 6.30 K.O. this morning, uh, John Caldera was on there. I'm sure you guys heard about this uh, assault weapons ban going up in Boulder. Yeah. Guns is a huge issue right now. It's this government mentality, we've got to do something, we've got to do something. People are being shot, we've got to do something about it. So just last night, Boulder City Council on third reading passed an assault weapons ban. You have 30 days to turn in your guns or register them. Register them, that's right. The magazines over 10 rounds are now illegal. Bump stocks and certain gun accessories are 100% illegal. And if you don't, well, guess what? You're a criminal. So there's a lot going on on the gun issue, definitely. But this issue, it was unbelievable to see how many people got mobilized. I heard stories. Politicians, legislators were actually unplugging their phones at the Capitol because of how many calls were coming in. Because of how many emails were, I mean, emails were flying, flying in like crazy. Unbelievable. All right. So there's a few more here. Um, use of mobile electronic devices while driving, Senate Bill 49. Who does not? I mean, honestly, who does not check their cell phone when you're in your car, right? No? Okay, great. Well, thank you, sir. Because <laughs> he doesn't have one yet. No, I, no, I have it, but I do not do it because of the law. I have, great. Actually, I have actually decided that it's too dangerous. Well, good, good for you. But you know, if you're at a stoplight, Stuck it in one of those RTDs where the train, empty trains are just going by for five yeah. minutes. Things like that, right? Well, this is, is not enough where it would just have been a ticket or a findable offense. This would have actually allowed infrastructure to be put in by the mobile networks where they could disable your phones while you're driving, things like that. I mean, super restrictive. Really crazy. Um, this one was kind of interesting was the RTD Low Income Fare Program. Like I just mentioned, RTD, right? So they're in trouble. None of people are taking the bus. None of people are taking the light rail. So let's subsidize it. You know, if you don't make enough money, we'll just have everybody else pay for your bus pass and your, and your train ticket. Pretty wild. Pretty wild. Uh, this one really blew my mind was uh, 1059, require a 911 call. 
So if somebody is having an emergency or there's something going on and you see somebody lying on the street and you do not call 911, you have a class six felony on them for not calling 911. Crazy, right? Got to report, report them to the authorities or else you're in trouble, right? Um, 1312, uh, net neutrality is a big issue going on right now. The uh, state legislators trying to put their own net new versions of net neutrality through. Fortunately, that bill stopped. I think it's a bad thing. So as you can see, I mean, I can answer any questions on any of these other bills on here. And this is just a handful, folks. I mean, there's really 800, there. nearly 800 different bills that went through. So a small sample of legislation. Now, does anybody, no, 800 bills. Does anybody think the legislators actually have time to read these bills before they vote on them? Does anybody believe that? There's one or two that say they do, but come on, right? Amendments. <laughs> There's no way. It's pretty much impossible. And that's their full-time job, right? That's their full-time job is to read the bills, to understand the bills, to vote on the bills. So how can we even, as citizens, as people who work full-time jobs, sometimes two jobs, how can we even know? We have an idea of what's going on at the state capitol. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? Now, thankfully, there are lobby groups uh, representing businesses. People give lobbies some hard time, but really, they're the ones that are holding a lot of these in checks in check, you know, the legislators not letting them pass too many restrictions on their businesses. We have uh, special interest groups, you know, it's nonprofits. I advance in Colorado, we do some lobbying, stuff the Independence Institute does, the AFP, and um, a lot of other groups that are actually doing a lot of good work. And it's really important that they're doing it. So, you know, every year the government grows bigger and bigger. Just over the last 10 years, the Colorado budget has grown by a billion dollars. A billion with a B dollars every year. That's a lot of money to take away your freedom. I mean, that's a lot that they can do to restrict you, you know. So, let's see here. I just want to say uh, before I close here, you know, in some respects we have gone beyond what Ayn Rand, uh, like Ayn Rand, uh, warned us about when she said, quote, we are fast approaching the stage of the ultimate inversion. The stage where the government is free to do anything it pleases, while the citizens may act only by permission, which is the stage of the darkest periods of human history, the stage of rule by brute force. But I don't want to leave you guys on a down note. There's definitely some hope. I mean, due to the grassroots activists and the huge outcry, we stopped the gun confiscation bill. It stopped. I mean, these Republic Republicans and Democrats were left with eggs on their face because of even attempting this. Due to Tabor, our taxpayer bill of rights, some, not all, but some of the tax increases were stopped. I mean, some of this is actually stopped. And I gotta say, due to the one seat GOP Republican majority in the state Senate, a lot of these bizarre restrictive mandates on property owners were halted. For now, you know. So, you know, friends, I really do believe it's a time for patriots, freedom advocates, libertarians, everybody to stand tall and say no. Say no to the authoritarians who advocate state violence against those of us who do not comply. Say no to anyone, especially a government employee that infringes on your right to self-ownership. And say no to those who wish to deprive you of your God-given rights. And say yes. Say yes to those who want to live in a voluntary society based on mutual respect and free enterprise. Well, thank you very much. I'm probably taking questions you have.